welcome to Road Tripping with BCPL. I'm your host, Regina Rose. Today we're in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, home to a thriving Amish community, an amazing year-round farmer's market, and some incredible outlet shopping. But did you know that Lancaster is also home to our 15th President, James Buchanan? It's true. And today we're going to learn more about President Buchanan and his lovely estate known as Wheatland. My name is Patrick Clark and I'm the director of President Buchanan's Wheatland. Wheatland uh, was originally owned by a nonprofit called the James Buchanan Foundation for the Preservation of Wheatland. And that was established back in 1936. And uh, in the 1950s, uh, a very uh, long-standing nonprofit in the community uh, that had been established back in the 1880s the Lancaster County Historical Society moved in next door uh, onto the grounds uh, of Wheatland that were formerly James Buchanan's orchards. Uh, and uh, they set up their home right next door. And in 2009, uh, uh, my colleague Thomas Ryan and I uh, convinced our boards of directors to bring the two nonprofits together under one, one umbrella. Uh, so today, the historic site is uh, uh, the stu we're the stewards of the site as opposed to owning it, but um, uh, the nonprofit is known as LancasterHistory.org, and um, uh, we are here to continue to share the the history and stories, both public and private life of James Buchanan, but also to tell the stories of all Lancastrians. How did President Buchanan come to own Wheatland? Well, he was the fourth owner. Um, he had been a homeowner in Lancaster City, uh, which is only a, all but a mile and a half away from here, um, uh, since 1834. He came to Lancaster as a young boy, grad graduated from Dickinson College in 1809 to study law and then to become a lawyer, uh, and then he got involved in politics. Um, when he was serving as Secretary of State for President Polk in 1848, he learned that um, the current owner of the Wheatlands, as it was known, uh, had decided that he didn't want to hold on to it as a, as a country home any longer. And James Buchanan uh, most likely had in the back of his head at that point that he would like to have a grand uh, uh, country home as a place where he could eventually retire, but a place that would also allow him to achieve some of his political aspirations. And of course his, his main political aspiration at that point in his life was to become President of the United States. Anywhere between uh, 75 to 85 percent of what's in the house today on display belonged to either James Buchanan or to a relative who has donated it to uh, a, a piece to, to help us tell the story. So we're very fortunate to have what I would call a very rich collection of um, family pieces. Um, Buchanan's home has never really been changed uh, since he lived there. Uh, his niece Harriet Lane, who inherited the house after he passed away, she and her husband uh, brought their two boys up from Baltimore uh, to uh, summer uh, in, the, uh, in the countryside up here. And sometime during the 1870s, the early 1870s, she installed a bathroom and put a window on the north wall so she altered the architecture in doing that. Uh, not the inclusion of the bathroom, but the, the uh, creation of a fenestration. Uh, other than that, the house is exactly as old Buck would have remembered it. Uh, what we've been doing since 1936 is to bring back its decorative appearance. Um, uh, everything from wallpaper to appropriate paint colors, uh, carpeting, that type of thing. And of course, enhancing all of that are the three-dimensional objects like sofas and sideboards. Um, and as I said, a very high percentage of those were his. Wheatland season is, uh, uh, starts about the middle of January. We usually take about a week and a half to um, put away all of the Yuletide season 
uh, decorations and bring the house back to an interpretation that is going to last throughout the rest of the year until the next Yuletide season starts. And um, so we're open uh, six days a week, uh, Monday through Saturday. Uh, tours are offered uh, starting at 10 o'clock on the hour and the last tour starts at three uh, each of those days of the, of the week. Um, the cost right now, I think we're still a pretty good bargain uh, at $12 uh, admission for an adult. Uh, and then we have some discounts for senior citizens. Uh, seniors 65 and older uh, just have to pay a $10 entry fee. What do you think Buchanan's presidential legacy is? Well, I, I think it's easier probably to answer what his legacy is as a, as a politician. Uh, and I would say that Buchanan was a successful candidate. Uh, he held almost as many different electable positions uh, in our nation's political arena as could possibly be held, uh, as well as appointments. He you know, started out as a member of the, the House of Representatives, uh, uh, and he also served in the Senate. Um, he was uh, a, the chief diplomat as Polk's Secretary of State. And he served under uh, Andrew Jackson as the minister to Russia and under President Pierce as the minister to Great Britain uh, and then became the president of the United States. But I guess if I had to think about a legacy for his presidency, um, I would say that uh, his legacy was a, a, a legacy to maintain the peace. Although uh, I think for any one person at that time in, in America's history, it would have been a, a tough uh, goal to try and hold on to. Um, he had a, um, James Buchanan was a, a, unfortunately for him, he treated the US presidency as a diplomat would have treated their job as a diplomat. Uh, and he uh, viewed the people as one uh, part of the, the diplomatic mission and the other being Congress. And he tried to bring those two together to the center and what happens to the person who is the diplomat when they fail to bring both parties to the center is they end up being vilified. And, and that's exactly what happened to James Buchanan. Thank you for joining us today. If you'd like to find out more about President James Buchanan and Wheatland, I recommend the following titles. Presidential Retreats by Peter Hannaford, The President's War by Krista Rose, and the DVD series, The American Presidents, 12th through 25th Presidents. These titles are more available at your local BCPL branch. For Road Tripping with BCPL, I'm Regina Rose.